Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be part two of the Stargate and Tetris uh, build. Now, um, I have the cabinets both laying on their side because I want to get the casters off of this one. And we're going to put new leg levelers on this. Same thing with this one, we're going to put leg levelers on it. Now let me show you the bottom of this. What's weird about these cabinets is they're both Stargate cabinets. Okay, both, both made by Williams. Both bottoms are different. I don't know what the reasoning is for that or why it's like that. I thought they all made them the same. But then again, this has an MDF front. This one has a plywood front. So clearly, were they making them in maybe multiple factories? Were they maybe first run, second run type deal? Like the plywood front was the first run. Maybe the MDF was the second run. I don't know. Just guessing if somebody knows please let me know i'm just curious um so basically what i want to do is i need to get this wood off of here that they put on there this is basically just pallet wood that they just nailed on the bottom of here and then they screwed uh casters to it so we're going to take these off we are going to cut a third block because i want my leg leveler to come down farther so we're going to cut a third block glue it and nail it to these other blocks, re-drill the hole, and put a threaded thing in there to uh, accept the uh, leg levelers. Um, we're going to do that on the front and back. But as you see how these have a block here, a block there, block there, block there. Those are the original blocks to the cabinet. Okay. Um, now let's look at the And you see how the bottom of this cabinet is straight, and then it cuts back. I copied the original piece that I broke or cut off of there. Now look at the difference on this cabinet. So these are the factory blocks. There's no evidence of those other blocks like I have in this front cat in this other cabinet. And these ones are triangle shaped. Okay. So these are triangle shaped right into the corner. This is plywood. Now this plywood is a little chewed up. I'm gonna um don't want to have to replace it if I don't have to. I think I'm gonna have to cut some of the loose stuff out and we'll fiberglass that with some short strand fiberglass. Um but if you look here, we're going to add a third block here, a third block to this one. But the strange thing is, is look at how this cabinet is cut. See how it's got a slight curve all the way back? Well, it's identical up here. It's perfectly the exact same curve as the other side. So that must be how it was cut because I highly doubt an operator back then was going to take the time to cut them that precise between both sides. Plus, I don't see any saw marks. Of somebody maybe taking a jigsaw to it or anything like that so clearly this one's built a little different than this one so i don't know i don't know what the what the theory is with that you would think that they would all have been made in the same factory as far as my knowledge they were but i could be wrong you know or maybe they made a bunch at first and this is what they did and then they Ended up making more, maybe, and they put an MDF front on it and changed the side profile a little bit. I don't know. So let me get the camera set up. So what we're going to need to do is cut some blocks the size of this, these squares, and then blocks the size of these triangles. Um, I'm going to take all this apart. I'm going to sand this down real quick to get rid of all the spider webs and everything else underneath there. I'll probably blow it off first. And then, uh, so basically first we should probably cut some blocks of plywood i have a piece of plywood right here we're just going to use this scrap and cut our pieces that we need now i'm using these nylon bottom um leg levelers i believe i got these on the amazon um, and then i have a whole box of these and i have two different styles of these now if i use this style it needs to go on this side of the plywood it would have to go on here like this and it would be sandwiched between the two layers of plywood or I can use this style right here, which go on this direction, and then they get three screws in it. So we're going to use this style. I think uh, I want to use this style. I have more of these ones anyway. So we're going to use that style, and I have screws and stuff that hold them in. So we got everything we need to make these regular leg levelers again. And then we can get rid of these stupid casters. And then while it's laying on its side, I might as well just do the bodywork on the side of the cabinet this side of the cabinet and that side of the cabinet. So let's, I'm gonna go set up my saw in the back room. We'll just cut some blocks back there with the vacuum cleaner, try to keep the dust down.
Okay, I'm set up here. Now I have to cut six two and a half inch squares. The reason being is one of the blocks is completely screwed up on the cabinet. So I'm gonna pop it off and, and sandwich three pieces of plywood together on that one. And then I need three other ones for the other three legs. Um, so we'll get that done and then we'll cut the triangle ones, which are four and a quarter inch triangle, which I'll show you that. So basically first we need to cut it this way at two and a half. Turn on my vacuum here. Kind of keep the dust down as much as possible. We have it cut this way at two and a half. So now, I wonder if I should cut it a second time. Yeah, it's close enough. So now we need to make some blocks this way. six square blocks now we need to cut some triangle blocks so I'm going to cut this on a 45 
Okay, let me clean this up and we can go start working on putting these blocks on. Okay, I think I have everything out that I need. Yes, it takes a hundred tools to do one little stupid job, but that's how it goes. So let's lower the camera down here. First thing I wanna do is, let's do this one first, this cap first. We'll pop off the old casters and those old blocks of wood. And then we can get the other ones, blocks of wood put on, get them screwed down and the holes drilled and everything else. Um, they nailed these on, they screwed the casters on, and of course I forgot batteries. All right, we'll grab a couple batteries. I'm gonna save the casters, just in case. Never need them for something stupid. You know what? The casters might be the only thing holding the wood on. That'd be nice. Put two blocks in the front and one block in the back. Okay. A screw holding it on from the inside. Yeah. Or it could be a broken off screw. off screw. Eh, I missed one. All right, now we can get these old leg levelers off of here. Now I'm going to go get pliers because they are rusted in here. So I'm going to go grab some pliers. We'll get those spun out. <coughs> you know what? Maybe we could break these off and make it a little bit easier. Pliers. Surprise, are unthreading. Now that old thread's gonna be stuck up in there, but I'm not gonna worry about it because I'm gonna put that other block on there and I don't plan on screwing the legs in super far. I wanna keep it off the floor a little bit to prevent anything from getting back in the bottom of the cabinet. You can see this thing was definitely got pretty wet at some point. Sometimes you can pop the 
and the polygon. All right, let me rustle these out rather than wasting a bunch of time on the video. And I'll be back once I get those last two out. Okay, they are off. Now this is, this block of wood screwed up. So we're gonna pop this one off, hopefully. Okay, so this one, we need three blocks. One block, one block, one block. I'm gonna throw a couple of little finish nails in there. Kind of hold them for now. To make sure they're tight. You go grab more staples. I have a hard time with these Bauer stapler and Brad nailer. They look identical, the guns. So I have a hard time distinguishing which one's which. I have the uh, DeWalt ones in my van and you could tell the Brad gun from the finish gun and the stapler. They all look relatively different. Except for this one, these all match. Okay, so now we're going to glue and put one more block on and then I'm going to put two screws in it. I'm going to put staples and then just two screws just to hold it because we're stacking three blocks down now so we're getting quite a bit of stacked up wood there so I just want to give it a little extra strength by putting some uh, inch and a quarter screws into them. The inch and a quarter screw will go through this one and almost through the second one. I'm still using this tight bond glue that I bought that I used to put these cabinet sides on. You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to push to make sure this block's touching in the corners. So I'm going to put glue on the two sides. Get it up there good. And then we'll throw a staple or two in it right on the outer edge. What's going on here? I gotta do this one. This one I'm gonna have to staple as I go, each layer that goes on. Blue is definitely thicker. So we can go right over top of where the old one was. Second one, I'm going to put it on this one edge and then all across the bottom. And if this wood plywood I'm using happens to be a little bit thinner, this block, than the other three, it doesn't matter because we'll just adjust the lay levelers to account for that.
like I said, we're gonna clean all the spider webs and everything off the bottom. Just don't have the sander out yet. We'll blow off what we can first. screws which I have a countersinking bit right here so what this does is this drills a pilot hole for the screw and then this right here makes a recess so that the head of the screw recesses into the plywood just a little bit keeps it from hanging up on the surface you buy these at Home Depot or Lowe's you used to be able to buy them individually this is a number eight they sell a three pack of like number Maybe it's 6, 8, 10, or 8, 10, 12. But the bigger ones I don't use because I'm using these exterior screws, which look just like a drywall screw, but they're exterior, and they're a lot stronger. If you use drywall screws and they start rusting, the heads are going to snap off of them. The heads on these don't snap off. So keep that in mind. Um, an exterior screw versus a drywall screw. And I'm only going to put two screws per block, I think that's all it needs. Just a little added security here, strength. try to get one side on each cabinet and maybe the front done and then tomorrow we'll do the uh, other side and whatever we need to do to the top and back so that hopefully tomorrow's video we can get them both into primer and then I'm going to be working on a truck for a couple days so I won't be working on these so the good thing is is the primer could dry for a couple days while I'm working on that truck Okay, got that done. Now we need to um, draw some center holes so we can get these uh, leg leveler things on there. It's two and a half, so inch and a quarter. Oops, inch and a quarter, not inch and three quarters. See if this drill bit set has a big enough drill bit. I don't know if half inch big enough or not. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be. Yep. Okay, it looks like the half inch bit's gonna make it. So we're gonna use this uh countersinking bit just for a pilot hole. too too deep there's no reason to stupid plywood splinter
half inch hole is like the perfect size for these. Okay, just got to screw in four legs, and this one is done on the bottom, other than painting it. But you see now I can keep this, you know, half inch, three quarters of an inch off the floor with these, and I have to worry about it getting all screwed up again. have a locking nut right here that you could spin up to lock it once you get it where you want it. Now I can uh, try to tape measure these and get them close but my shop floor is not perfectly level so sometimes when I spin the cabinet it might start rocking. So there's really only so much you can do. It's almost inch and a half. Sorry, am I saying inch and a quarter or inch and a half? No, I'm measuring off the wrong spot. It's about one inch. Okay. Good enough for now. Okay, we're done with this one. So now I'm going to repeat the process on the other one. Basically, I'm just going to do the exact same thing, but we're working with triangles rather than squares. So I'm going to do this part off camera, come back and show you the bottom of this one. Okay, this one is done as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind this seam down with my little grinder. I'm going to make like a belly on both pieces of plywood so we can fill it with short strand fiberglass. That takes a little bit to dry, so I want to get that ground down and get that on there. Let it set for a little bit and then come back. We'll sand that down. Now on this, I have a little bit of flaking plywood. So I'm going to cut it back a little bit. The rest of it's solid. So I don't want to cut the bottom of the cabinet off if I don't have to. But I noticed that some of this is lifting a little bit. So I'm going to cut back here. just like that. Now, the rest of it is still solid, so I'm not gonna screw with it. I'm just gonna take off what's loose, and we're gonna fill it in with short strand fiberglass. I'm showing every kind of method that you can do, different methods you can do on these videos, just so you guys have ideas and options on different ways to go about fixing some bad spots on your cabinet. So there, I got rid of all the stuff that's loose. So now we're going to get the air hose. We're going to grind down the plywood on both cabinets, just the spots where we're going to put the short strand fiberglass. On this one right here that we just cut, we're going to just kind of bevel the edge.
pulley so that that has somewhere to sit. And on the other one, I just kind of beveled the edge. I got to make sure I have some here. I don't know that I have any. Okay, I do have some. I don't have a lot. I'm probably going to pick up another can when I go out. Um, but this is what I use. I don't buy the most expensive one. You don't need to. But this is just Bondo brand, Bondo glass. Um, you can get it in quarts and gallons. I don't think anybody around me sells it in a gallon. Unless you get a better brand or a more expensive brand, I should say. I don't really know how much better it is. But I, I should have plenty in here to do what I'm doing on these sides. Like I said, I'm probably going to have to get another quart for the other side. Which is fine, because I wasn't really planning on doing both sides tonight anyways. So if you look closely, you can see little strands coming off with the filler. That's actually uh, chopped up fiberglass mesh. And that, what that, that's why I made that belly and then I ground the other one on an angle. What that's going to do is those little strands of fiberglass, that hair, as you would kind of call it, is going to kind of, uh, it's going to cover over the seam between the two layers of plywood. And what it's going to do is kind of create little strands of hair going across that seam, which is going to help bridge the seam together and hopefully cause it not to want to shrink back. If we just took that seam and went right with the Bondo right over it, chances are that seam would come back and you would see that in the future through your paint on your cabinet because Bondo doesn't have any fibers in it or anything like that. So you wanna make sure you put something in there with a fiber or use um, uh, fiberglass resin, you can use that. but to be honest with you, when it's a seam like that, I would rather use this that has the fibers in it because even the fiberglass resin, that doesn't have fiberglass uh, hairs in it unless you cut strips of uh, fiberglass mesh and put it over it. But that means you have to grind the plywood down farther because you have to have enough room to be able to do all that. What your goal is, is when you're done with your repair, you want it to be perfectly smooth like the tabletop. You don't want to have your seam right here and then your repair go like this and then bump up because you've put too much product over the seam. And that's why another reason why I wanted to grind it down is to minimize that. So we're going to go over there and put this on the cabinets. I almost kicked the camera over. All right. Let's put it on this one first. We don't need to go super wide because that's what the Bondo is going to do. We just want to fill in this void. So that when we sand it, we're not really going to sand much of it off at all. We're just going to just rough it up, make sure it's flat with the rest of the cabinet. And then we will apply a thin layer of Bondo over top. So the better you smooth it, the less sanding you have to do. And I noticed uh, got a couple nicks on the edge, some bigger ones. Since I have this mixed up, I'm just going to go ahead and hit them. Not going to hurt to put this in there by any means. And that we can just kind of let stay bulb up in the air a little bit because we'll sand that down. With this stuff, it fills in bigger holes quicker. If we were just using Bondo, you're going to probably need three coats to really fill this stuff in. With this being thicker, it, you don't have to do three coats of Bondo. Two, maybe a little bit of that glazing putty afterwards. Okay, I think I got everything big filled in on this one. So let's go over to the other one. And we'll fill in where we uh, cut back that layer of plywood. Some more. 
Yeah, we're going to use probably all that I have here, which is fine. I like to use it up because it's been, I've had it a while and it'd be good to get rid of the old stuff and get a new can. It's not bad because it's never frozen or anything like that, but once you start getting towards the bottom, it gets stiffer. Can doesn't seal as good as it gets older. But you got to use like a paint stick to get this stuff out of here. And we're going to need a wider spreader too. We'll just probably use a plastic one. This is about all I got. So we will make it work. Even if I don't get it built 100% up with this, we can finish it with the Bondo on the second cabinet. We just want to get the good base down of this stuff. Okay. And don't stir your filler. I don't care if it's fiberglass resin or oh, resin you could stir, uh, but if it's this stuff, this Bondo glass or the regular Bondo, don't stir it, flip it over, take it and flip it. Mix it like that. It's going to minimize your air bubbles in your filler when it dries. This stuff is thick, as you can see, it doesn't move a lot compared to Bondo. We can see it hold that chunk there for quite a long time. Bondo would have already fell. Determined to knock over the tripod today. Look, oh, that little piece of old Bondo stuck in there. Looks like we're going to have enough to fill it in pretty darn good. At least then the whole edge in the bottom is going to be this fiberglass rather than do Bondo. Take your time with it. This stuff gives you a pretty good amount of time to work with it and get it where you want it. Definitely takes longer to dry than regular Bondo does. that and we'll leave it as is get this cleaned up and we'll let it dry for a little while then i'll be back and we're going to sand that down sand this down and then we're going to start bonding these two cabinets up getting them ready for primer okay i'm going to take the big da sander the big eight inch with some 80 grit sandpaper and we're going to knock down this filler real quick so that we can blow it off and start putting on some bondo
Okay, that feels really, really good. Nice and level. So now the next coat we'll put on a little bit wider and kind of just feather it out a little bit more. I got a little bit right here I gotta hit. We'll use the smaller sander for those areas in a minute. While I still have this one hooked up, let's knock down this bottom edge. other spots real quick and then I'll get it blown off and we will put some filler on these two cabinet sides spots that I see that need a coat of Bondo. Now remember I had showed you on another video um, when I was working on those Atari particle board cabinets not to run your DA sander on this edge because the particle board flakes off. This is plywood it doesn't do that so you can run your sander on the edge just so you know if I was doing it on this video why I was doing it on this cabinet versus the other cabinet. So let me get this blown off and we'll mix up some filler. Okay, now I'm gonna mix up some lightweight body filler. And I actually got this on sale from Summit Racing, so I bought four gallons of it. But it is uh, lightweight auto body filler from Summit Racing. The part number is SUM-944000. I think I paid less than $50 a gallon for it. Maybe even less than that, I don't remember. I bought it probably over a month ago. I hate these plastic shipping rings. They're a pain in the butt to get off sometimes. All right, let me get this off and we'll get some mixed up. I might be able to get it actually real quick. There we go. Now we're gonna go over all the big areas that we see. And then we'll do one more uh, body work to the areas again with a different body filler. But right now we're concentrating on the real, we're going to hit them all, but we want to make sure that we fill in all the deeper ones with this stuff. Now there's a little bit of liquid on the top. If you open a gallon up and it's really bad, 
you're gonna have to stir it up. This isn't too bad, so I'm not worried about it. But you're gonna wanna stir it up if you have a bunch of liquid on the top of your gallon container. And when you buy Bondo anymore, don't think it's gonna be filled to the rim because it's not, it goes by weight anymore rather than the gallon. Just their way of saving more money. And once again, make sure you uh, fold your filler over, you don't stir it. So I'm gonna get this mixed up and we're gonna put a coat on all these areas that I see. Now I am gonna coat over this whole body or this whole plywood area at the bottom because this is this plywood is a little bit the grain is a little bit rougher than the rest of the cabinet would be so by coating over it when we sand it we'll fill in all the roughness of the plywood so that it'll primer up better and it'll match the rest of the cabinet so we're not going crazy here just a nice smooth even coat we'll sand it with that big sander again Just feathering it out farther than I did with the last coat. Not pulling on it real hard, just kind of uh, grazing over it. Now this is gonna get filler primed and sanded twice this cabinet. So if I miss something after my first primering, you can always go back and touch it up. But you gotta keep in mind too that your primer could also fix some of the really minor areas, depending on how bad they are. surface for our stencils to get painted onto because whatever is not done well is going to show through on your paint job so you want to really take your time and get this to where it needs to be rushing it is just going to give you crappy results in the end getting full vinyl wrap so that one doesn't have to be as good but it still has to be smooth Exact same thing to this one. Finding all the imperfections. Probably gonna have to mix up a little bit more. If you look right here, that's not stirred enough. So we're just gonna take it and kind of go over. up and finish this and then we will come back and sand it all down and then we'll do one more coat where we need it with the thinner stuff and then these sides should be done then we just got to do the other sides and primer them
Okay, let me get some more mixed up. Okay, I'll, I'll hit this big area real quick and then I'll do the small areas off camera. Show you how quick this uh, big DA sander will knock this down flat. Okay, other than cleaning up the edges a little bit with a little sander, this is good. That's real good. So I'm going to go around and sand all these cabinet sides, this, both of these cabinet sides down, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I've got to do one more coat on some spots here and there. There's some real small nicks. Um, I get a little bit down here I need to put a little thicker. So we're going to mix this uh, Bondo up a little differently this time. This uh, cabinet here is looking real, real good. I'm happy with that. I got a couple little nicks on here I'm missing too. Got a little bit right here to do. A little bit right here. Just some minor stuff. And I'm also going to mix up some and start putting some on the front too on both of these cabinets while I'm uh, doing it. But I want to show you something real quick. And I'm going to do it off camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this next coat put on and sand it down then i'll come back and show you what it looks like but what i'm going to do on this coat is something a little different i'm going to take my regular lightweight body filler and i'm going to mix a little bit of this dolphin glaze in with it and what that's going to do is give me like a happy medium um not as so it won't be as thick as this and it won't be as thin as this it's going to kind of split the difference between the two and that'll make it um where I could put it on a little bit heavier still and it won't be as runny as if I just use this because there's a couple spots on the bottom of the one cabinet that I want to fill in with a little bit thicker product. I'm going to mix up some of this and pour some of this into it. And so all it's doing is thinning out this uh, body filler a little bit. Just like that. It's, it's like when I put that uh, fiberglass resin into the body filler on the last video when I was doing the other cabinets. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up and get it on the cabinet, get it sanded down, and then we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, both sides, or the sides are sanded down on both cabinets. I cleaned the bottom of this. I blew them off really good, sanded them down so they're nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead and stand these up, and then uh, we'll take a quick look at them. Okay, so we need to do this side of this cabinet a little bit more on the front. I have to sand this side down still. I never sanded that down, so i got to sand this down, do this side a little bit more on the front. And then we'll be ready for the primer. So tomorrow night, my goal is to have another video out of these cabinets, finished, body worked, and in primer. Then they'll sit for the next couple days, dry, while I work on that pickup truck. Um, trying to think here. I'm not going to do a ton of videoing tomorrow on the body work part of it, because I already showed you what I'm doing. I'm just duplicating it on the other side. So I'll just start the video, show you what I'm going to finish up and then I'll get it body worked then we'll get them into the spray booth and get them primered so that's going to wrap up part two of the Stargate cabinets don't forget this one's going to be a Tetris this one is mine which is going to be original Stargate with painted on stencils like they did from the factory so hopefully you guys are liking what you're seeing please like subscribe share hit the thumbs up any questions or comments feel free to ask other than that I will see you guys tomorrow thanks guys